All right, Sammy fam, today we are going to be making some hopefully delicious lasagna roll-ups. It's my first time making this, but I think we won't mess it up. Miso, I don't really need your help for this, buddy. You're kind of in the way. I'm sorry. Go eat your lunch. Oh, you ate, you ate every single bite of it already? Little piggy. First up, we have to mix up our filling. I have some garlic I just roasted in the oven. It's still pretty hot. I love the flavor of roasted garlic and you can just do that and squeeze it out. All you gotta do to roast garlic is just cut off the top of the garlic head, get some foil around it, sprinkle a little salt, a little olive oil on there, have like a pan under it in the oven to catch it. 400 degrees, 30 to 40 minutes and freaking delicious. Ricotta cheese. Sorry, you can hear my cat doing his post-lunch bowel movement. Sauteed shallots, chopped basil, a sprinkle of salt. Use something nice, you know. And I have a seasoned blend of Romano. You could use Parmesan, mozzarella, and then red pepper flakes, garlic powder, and an Italian seasoning blend. Just use a little bit. We're gonna save the rest to put on top of these roll-ups. Give it a stir. Make sure you get all that garlic mashed up in there. Give it a little taste. Our tastes delicious, but I want just a touch more salt. So good, perfect. I have my lasagna sheets here. They're al dente cooked. I only cook these for about three minutes. Just enough so I can roll them up, but they won't fall apart. And they're just lightly oiled, so they won't stick together, hopefully. Just gonna lay these all out. And now the fun and tedious part begins. Let's just start with one to see if we have the level of filling correct. I think that seems about right. Now let's go fast. Make sure to place some seam side down to hold them together. Okay, we are all rolled up here, and I'm going to put on some red... Oh, my hands are way too slippery for this right now. There we go. My grip strength is still a little bit lacking, so it's hard to open jars, but I'm gonna put on some red sauces. This is one of my favorite store-bought red sauces, the Carbone Arabiata. Uh, you could make your own, or you can use your favorite one from the store. I say go to town with it. Now we're gonna add all this extra cheese. And you know what, we're gonna throw in just the last bit of this. What's the point in saving it? Let's cover this in foil so the cheese doesn't burn. And this will bake at 350 for about 30 minutes. And then since I like a crispy brown cheese on top, we are going to take off the foil and let it bake a little bit longer. This is heavy. Ooh, I'm not supposed to use this hand to bear weight. Gotta remember, surgeon's orders. It is time. Oh my God, Becky. Look at all that cheesy, gooey deliciousness sizzling away. Well, 
of it. I'm going to try to pull up a serving so it'll cool off a little bit faster. I don't know what a serving is. An entire row? That seems like a good serving. And I love the crispy edges. That's a lot of cheese. Hmm. How do I do this without burning myself? Oh, it's crunchy. It's like the Detroit pizza of lasagnas. Oh, I lost one. This literally just came out of the oven, so it may be too hot to even attempt. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. I guess you could say that the individual rolls kind of give you a nice portion size so you can limit yourself, but I'm not particularly good at limiting myself, especially when it comes to cheesy, saucy pasta. Oh. It's like delicious molten lava. Oh my god, the roasted garlic just sets it off. And the lasagna, since I cooked it pretty al dente, just to the point where I could roll it up, it's not over-baked. It's the perfect blend of like tender and still like bite. The crunchy bits of the cheese and the flavor of the mozzarella and the Parmesan where, you know, it's a little bit browned. I love that. That, what is that? Caramelization or Maillard reaction or whatever it is. You know, who cares about the chemistry of it? It just works out. And it was so simple to do. Only a few steps. Shredding some cheese, using some spices from the cabinet, gave me an excuse to make uh, some roasted garlic, which I love. Saute a shallot, which makes the whole apartment smell nice. And then this makes it smell nice again. And store-bought red sauce, wow. Like, And it tastes like, you know, a very skilled grandmother made this. I don't mean to insult, but a lot of people talk about grandma's cooking being so good. But most people's grandmas cannot cook. And that's fine. People have different passions in life. I was lucky both my grandmothers are very passionate about cooking. Mm. My granny would have French picnic days at her house. She was a bit of an Anglophile and a bit of a Francophile as well. She would travel to England and France fairly regularly. She went a lot of times during her life. Granddad and Granny would go over there and drive around Europe. And uh, their daughter, my aunt, who speaks fluent, fluent, <laughs> fluent French, Lived and worked in France for a while. Also studied abroad in France. Famously with a, um, lived with a very stingy landlady who only wanted to let them take baths like once a week or something. So I think they had to like sneak baths when she wasn't home. That must have been in the 70s, I think. Crazy times. Mm. 
Mom killed out of him from a family that really values delicious food. Well, at least my grandmother and my aunt. My parents are a little bit more on the healthy kick side of it. So growing up at home, I mainly had, you know, whole wheat bread and deli slices for sandwiches I really couldn't stand. They're good cooks. My parents are. It's just the 90s was a time where healthy cooking hadn't really become, I don't know, there wasn't a culture of tasty healthy cooking. It was all about just putting as many weird nuts and seeds in everything that you ate. And um, just from a texture and flavor standpoint, I never, I never grew to like that. Nowadays, I basically live off salads outside of these videos and other high fiber things like black beans, but I just learned to make them the way I like. And it seems to keep me pretty healthy, so. But you know, you do whatever floats your own boat. Can't really judge another person's personal decisions regarding what flavors they like. I only really judge people if they close the door on trying things, if they won't try something one time to see if they like it or see if they can learn something from it in terms of cooking techniques or flavors or whatever, because that's how you broaden your palate and broaden your experience and, you know, bring new flavor combinations into your own home from trying things out in the world at restaurants, on trips, you know, wherever it may be. This is so freaking good. I'm gonna be making this all the time. Well, by all the time, I mean, I'm gonna put it in the rotation with other dishes, but I have so many dishes in rotation, things only come up once or twice a year for like special occasion meals. Because most weekdays, I'm just eating a salad. Like I had salad yesterday, tomorrow I'm gonna have salad. Friday, probably have salad. But then this weekend, I'll probably do like a picnic out with my wife or make a special pasta. Something fun that takes a while that you can do together. Put on some soft jazz in the background. Have a little wine with. And that's a fun Saturday evening for me. Oh my God. I love this. This is one of my favorite things I've made in a long time. The way the mozzarella on the inside mixed with the ricotta gives a little more stretchy body than just being, you know, saucy and creamy. Perfect combo. I'm super glad that I almost overloaded it with basil. I was worried I was putting in too much basil, but when it cooks and mixes with the cheese, it really mellows out and becomes way less, you know, punch you in the face basil. So now it's just, it's more subtle. And with the roasted garlic, the garlic flavor is, you know, subtle and sweetened by the roasting. It all balances out really well. Well, thank you guys for watching. You gotta try this. It's freaking amazing off the charts, so good.